the real young master and I worked together to live a cushy life, he got close to a Beijing princess, while I hooked up with her older sister. In less than a year, we were already drinking goji berry tea from thermos flasks. Later, rumors spread that the two sisters were getting engaged, but neither of us was the groom. Real young master, brother, have you made enough money? Me, brother, if we spend carefully, it's enough. Real young master, my back can't take it anymore. It's time to escape. Me, good brother, let's go together. The two of us boarded the plane with our arms around each other's shoulders, but the plane was forced to turn back. We ended up kneeling on durians, trembling. The real young master was dragged into the room by the Beijing princess, and soon the sound of a whip echoed. As for me, I was hoisted into the air. Chapter 1 After my parents died, the real young master and I were fighting over the family inheritance, but it turned out we were both useless. We quickly squandered the family fortune. The real young master and I finally came to a mutual understanding. We were a couple of idiots who couldn't do anything right. To live a good life, we decided to rely on rich women. The real young master got involved with the Beijing princess, Monica. I got together with her older sister, Melissa, the eldest princess of Beijing. The real young master and I were living our dream lives. Lots of money, few worries. The two sisters were always busy, constantly flying around the world. Luis often lamented. No wonder the company went under when we took over. We're just not cut out for hard work. We were both home buddies. I loved reading novels. He was obsessed with gaming. When we took over the company, we were too lazy to even go on business trips, and the company went bust under our watch. But recently, our cushy lifestyle hit a crisis. According to reliable sources, the sisters were getting engaged, and we weren't the grooms. I was reluctant to give up the luxury of sleeping in until 5 in the afternoon, sipping on my goji berry tea from the thermos. I asked, is this news reliable? Luis. Chewing on a goji berry with a weary look, replied, It's true, I saw them meeting with their fiancés. The goji berry was chewed to mush in his mouth. Just like our crumbling lives, things were looking bad. Even as sugar babies, we had to have some professional ethics. Lin, the pitiful brother in arms, the good days are over. Have you saved enough? I gulped down a large mouthful of goji berry tea and exchanged glances with him. We both rushed back to our rooms to check our small fortunes. Five minutes later, we reconvened. After a rough estimate, our current assets were enough to support the two of us for the rest of our lives. Luis rubbed his lower back. It's about time to escape. If I don't, my back's going to give out. Are you running? I nodded in agreement. Feeling the same way. In less than a year, we had both resorted to drinking goji berry tea. Monica was still young, with lots of energy and tricks up her sleeve. As for Melissa, I fished out the goji berries from my tea and ate them. Women are like clothes, but brothers are like limbs especially when a brother shares the same temperament and aspirations as you. Besides, if I didn't run, I was about to become the third wheel. If you're a real brother, let's escape together. Chapter 2 If you really want to leave, you can do it at any time. Of course, we needed to conserve our strength. After all, only cows die from exhaustion. The land is never worn out. My legs feel weak right now. How could we escape? So, when Melissa, wearing something quite revealing, invited me in, I had just one response to kill her interest. I have diarrhea. To make it more convincing, I rushed to the bathroom to squat. I sent Luis a message asking for an update. My phone started buzzing non-stop. I quickly turned off the vibration. A flood of messages came in one after another. Luis, we're escaping tomorrow. Running non-stop. Do you know how wild she is? Whips. Butler outfits. Making money is hard. But this life is harder. I'm done. I could imagine the level of breakdown Luis was going through on the other end of the phone. At that moment. I felt extremely lucky that Melissa was more traditional. She wasn't into those kinky things. Peter, are you okay? Should I call the family doctor? Melissa's concerned voice came from outside the door. In a weak voice, I replied. No need. It's just stomach pain. A little rest and I'll be fine. Hearing that, she finally left me alone. Honestly, Melissa had been really good to me. But since she was getting engaged, there wasn't much I could do. Strangely, I started feeling like my stomach ache was getting worse. Well. The first day of our escape plan was a failure. I went to the bathroom 11 times. Luis went 13 times. We both ended up getting hooked to four drips at home. When Melissa found out that we got diarrhea from eating all 50 ice creams in the fridge, she had the butler lock all the fridges. Melissa sighed. Are you a child? You don't even take care of your body. I weakly held my stomach, feeling the burning sensation from my backside. Our escape failed before we even had the chance to start. Then, every now and then, Melissa would feed me a cup of hot water. Is this the famous, drink more hot water, treatment? To make matters worse, the two sisters cancelled their meetings to stay home and take care of us. Chapter 3 Three days later, 
Luis and I met again, after blaming each other for not being able to control our appetites, we began to worry. They actually cancelled their business trips for the next month just to stay with us. I never imagined that the two workaholics would stop loving their jobs. Luis sneered. It's not for us, it's for their real fiancés. Luis told me that in the middle of the night, Monica was chatting away happily in the study with another man. They even made plans to meet up. Brother. Stop dreaming, we have no chance of becoming the main men in their lives. I felt a little down. Melissa had only been with me all these years. I thought I was special, that I had a chance. But in the end, I couldn't compete with status and family background. With both sisters at home, our just leave plan was completely thrown off. Luis and I subtly probed their assistance and finally pinpointed a time. Five days from now, they would both be out of the house. They had plans to meet with their fiancés to strengthen their emotional bonds. Ah, the troubles of high society, even engagements require scheduling through assistance. This time, don't mess it up. Luis warned me. I assured him, if we didn't escape now, we'd truly become the third wheel. To conserve my energy, I went to bed at 10 o'clock. Melissa wasn't pleased and kicked me awake. What kind of lover goes to bed before their sugar mommy? I had no choice but to stay up with her. Whenever she showed any signs of desire, I deflected with cold jokes. She humored me with a small laugh. Then, she placed her hand on my buttons. Sweat dripped from the corner of my forehead as I grabbed her hand and passionately told the next joke. I forced a few awkward laughs to make Melissa lose interest. She gave me a long, meaningful look, scanning me from top to bottom. Was it my imagination? Or did her gaze linger down below for a bit longer? Chapter 4 The next day, I stared at the dishes on the table, deep in thought. Luis didn't look too happy either. Goji berry stewed with old hen, turtle soup, chive pockets, oh, and medicinal wine, all of it meant to boost a man's vitality. Monica unceremoniously scooped a bowl of turtle soup for Luis. Luis, drink up. Luis held the bowl like a martyr heading to his doom and drank it down. Monica made sure to serve Luis every dish. All the so-called nourishing food ended up in Luis's stomach. I gave him a worried look. He had a weak constitution. Every time Monica was home, he'd be too pale to get out of bed. This couldn't mess up our escape plan. Luis's hand trembled as he picked up the food, but he gave me a determined look, turning my head. I met Melissa's concerned gaze. He really was my brother in arms through thick and thin. After the meal, I felt a wave of unbearable heat, and even the pillar looked unusually attractive. I slapped myself. I couldn't let myself turn into a pervert. I'd get cancelled for that. Looking at the increasingly scantily clad Melissa, I bolted to the gym and spent the night lifting weights. There was no other choice. Melissa might be traditional, but she was strong-willed. She wanted me to be a man of great prowess, like one of those domineering CEOs, capable of going seven rounds a night. She also loved taking the initiative. In her bed, I was nothing more than a helpless, virtuous man. Your Highness, I just can't do it. By the end of that night, I was afraid I wouldn't even be able to crawl out of the villa on the day of our escape. Luis's room light stayed on all night as well. The next morning, Luis, with dark circles under his eyes, was stuffing his mouth with a big bag of goji berries. I silently handed him a cup of warm water. With concern, I said, Monica is really overdoing it. I'll talk to Melissa. Luis gave me a grateful look. Melissa's words still held weight with Monica. And Melissa, thankfully, didn't torment me either. The two of us managed to make it to the day of their engagement meetings without incident. Chapter 5 I got up early for a change, dutifully handing Melissa her clothes. I ate breakfast with her. Melissa teased, have you finally figured out how to treat your sugar mama properly? I didn't respond, just served her with even more care. I took care of everything. She didn't need to lift a finger. I even squeezed her toothpaste for her. The goal was to get her out of the house as quickly as possible. Watching her leisurely reading the newspaper, I was getting anxious on her behalf. Finally, she stood up, and I smiled broadly as I escorted her to the door. Just as she was about to leave, she asked, out of nowhere, are you looking for inspiration? I had no idea what she meant, so I didn't dare answer recklessly. I chose silence instead, checking the time, seriously, just go already. Melissa's gaze grew deeper, could she be suspecting something? My heartbeat sped up, to my surprise, Melissa invited me, why don't you come with me? What would I even do there? My writer's brain immediately conjured up a host of scenarios. The female lead brings the second male lead to provoke the main male lead, who then has a sudden epiphany. No, 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 I don't want to be part of your love games. I shook my head so fast it looked like a bobblehead, what would I even do? No, no, I'm not going. To emphasize my reluctance, I even made an X gesture with my hands, but unusually, Melissa didn't let it go this time. It's time you meet him, she said, her voice soft as she blushed. I was heartbroken to realize my guess was right. She was going to take me to provoke her fiancé. 
Feeling disheartened, I said. You know I'm not into socializing, and I didn't sleep well last night. I need to catch up on sleep. Are you feeling unwell? I can stay home with you today. Melissa turned to come back inside. I'm not unwell. I raised my voice. Besides, Luis will keep me company. Once Melissa confirmed there was nothing seriously wrong with me, she gave me an exasperated look. Even when she rolls her eyes, she's stunning. You and Luis are inseparable. Even I can't compare to your bond. There was a hint of jealousy, though I wasn't sure. Of course, my bond with him is strong, he's my brother. After throwing a basketful of sweet words at her, I finally managed to get her out the door. Chapter 6 It should have been easy for two grown men to make a run for it. The moment they left, we walked out right behind them, empty-handed. We'd already transferred the money to different accounts, as long as we had our phones, we could go anywhere. So, we casually boarded the plane. The plane took off without a hitch, none of those cliché scenes where the domineering CEO stops the female lead before boarding. In business class, Luis and I sat across from each other. He elegantly raised his glass of red wine and clinked it with mine. To freedom, I felt like I should flash a devilish grin. So I cracked a wide smile. To our lost youth, this smooth red wine, this clear blue sky, how beautiful, Luis said. Once I'm in France, I'm going to have a whirlwind romance with the local beauties. Just as I was about to admire his ambition, he added, and then, I'll lead them to victory in the game. I rolled my eyes at him. Never written a French melodrama before. Let me see if there's any inspiration, I said. His eyes practically screamed. You think you're any better? Suddenly, the plane came to an abrupt stop. Red wine spilled all over Luis and me. I had a sinking feeling. Before we could clean up, the flight attendant rushed over. Sorry, gentlemen, but the plane will be returning due to unforeseen circumstances. A thunderclap on a clear day. A strange creaking noise echoed in the cabin. Luis's teeth chattered. Luis asked, what do you think? It feels like the plane's being forced back by certain people. I emphasized the word certain. We both knew exactly who those people were. The chance of a plane malfunction was slim, and only a handful of people in Beijing had the power to turn a plane around. In disbelief, Luis muttered, we barely left. How did they find out so fast? Luis blocked the flight attendant from leaving. No, keep flying. After his helpless outburst, the plane turned back. Chapter 7. As soon as I saw the two familiar faces on the ground, surrounded by a group of bodyguards, my last hope died. The Sioux family compensated each passenger with 30,000 yuan, and the complaints vanished instantly. We were forcibly taken back by the bodyguards, kneeling on durian shells. Luis and I trembled. Monica's temper wasn't as steady as her sister's. She slammed her hand on the chair, not talking. Fine, let's take this somewhere else. Luis was dragged away. Bro, bro, help me. His pitiful screams could make anyone cry. Let him go. I couldn't help but call out. But before I knew it, Melissa was standing in front of me. She lifted my chin. Men, I've been far too kind to you. That's why you've taken advantage. And then, I was strung up, hung beside the bed. I didn't sleep a wink that night. After a night of exhausting battle, my head was spinning, and my legs were weak as I tried to push myself away from the soft body next to me, but a long leg hooked me back, I yelped, I really can't anymore, I'm out of energy, thankfully, she just snuggled closer, this time, she held me tight, I whispered, I need to check on Luis, I'm worried about him, Melissa lazily opened her eyes, my sister and Luis aren't up yet, are you sure you want to go, I had to maintain some distance, after holding back for a while, I finally asked, how did you find out we were running? She let out a cold laugh and sat up. Two guys who never go out and always ask the driver to take them everywhere suddenly took a cab. The butler knew something was up and called us. Otherwise, you might have actually gotten away. Chapter 8. Don't you think it's time you explained why you tried to run, Peter? I lowered my head, remaining silent. Looking into her clear eyes, I mumbled. I don't want to be the third wheel. She didn't hear me, so she asked me to repeat myself. I said, I don't want to be the third wheel. It was time to lay it all out. She looked even more shocked than I was. When were you ever the third wheel? I told her the rumors I'd heard. She and Monica were going to form an alliance with another wealthy family, and the fiancés had already been chosen. I took a deep breath. We're not the kind of people to cling on. If you're getting married, let Luis and me go. The more she listened, the deeper her frown grew. That's why you wouldn't go out with me the other day. I felt wronged. Did you expect me to be part of your game? Wait. Hold on. That might actually not be a bad idea. Good for gathering material. Melissa gave me a look like I was an idiot. What are you even thinking? Do all writers have imaginations this big? That day, I was going to meet two people. She explained that her childhood friend had returned to the country with his girlfriend and wanted to meet her boyfriend as well. So she wanted me to come along. Which means, so, you like me? I asked in disbelief. 
Then why do you keep saying you're my sugar mama? She handed me her phone, showing me my own Weibo. It was you who said you wanted to experience life with a sugar mama, so I played along to give you some inspiration. Who knew you'd actually treat me like a sugar mama? Looking at her screen, I was stunned, followed by overwhelming shame. She, she, she's my top fan. Chapter 9. Some people, even when alive, might as well be dead. Do you think I'd take just anyone? She raised an eyebrow at me. I looked at the domineering woman before me, surprised at how deeply she was into the melodramatic stories I wrote. She had been following my work since I was a nobody. Mystery solved. No wonder some of her lines sounded so familiar. Weren't they straight out of my book The CEO and His Little Sweetheart? My toes curled with embarrassment. When did you figure out who I was? I asked. Uncharacteristically shy. My feelings toward her were getting more complicated. At first, I thought she was just a sugar mama. Then I learned she was a reader. And finally, it turned out she was also a wealthy heiress. When you stopped updating for 18 days, I was furious and sent someone to investigate. The blush on my face faded. There was nothing romantic about that. Turns out she just wanted to lock me up in a small, dark room to write. After your family went bankrupt, I originally planned to help you out. But who knew you'd want to be my man? Stop. That's so embarrassing. I thought about how she'd pushed me to go seven rounds a night and bought me a whole wardrobe of custom suits. She really did like me. I kissed her to stop her from saying any more. It wasn't until she was almost out of breath that I let her go. Confessing one's feelings should be a man's job. Melissa. I actually fell in love with you at first sight. If I didn't like you, why would I stick around as a kept man? She blushed and said nothing. Her rosy cheek spoke louder than any love confession. I rolled around on the bed with her in my arms. Chapter 10. He he he. He 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 he. I lay in bed, giggling like an idiot. Someone shoved me, snapping me out of it. I looked up to see Luis, his face dark as a storm cloud. What are you grinning about? He asked. How did you know Melissa liked me? Luis fell silent. He was hurt, staring at me. He said, are we brothers? If we are, then help me. Only then did I realize Luis's situation was different from mine. He had gotten involved with Monica because he looked like Monica's unforgettable first love. In other words, he was a stand-in and he had only found out recently, I can be her lover, but I refuse to be a stand-in. Being a stand-in was his forbidden line, it was mine too. Back when Luis went missing, the Lin family lost it and forced me to become his stand-in. I had my own parents, but the Lin family orchestrated a car accident that killed them. Then, after Luis was found, he returned to discover his own stand-in at home, and it disgusted him. After we dealt with the crazy Lin family together, Luis and I fought over the inheritance. Toward the end of the fight, he learned about my past and handed the company over to me without a word. We had fought our way to a brotherly bond, swearing loyalty in blood, becoming brothers in everything but blood. I knew him well. He genuinely liked Monica. Otherwise, even a skinny camel was bigger than a horse, he wouldn't have stooped to being Monica's kept man. But Monica had crossed the line, and staying with her made Luis unhappy. As his brother, of course I had to help him get out. Chapter 11. I had a brilliant idea. I put on my newly arrived suit, sprayed on some cologne and struck a seductive pose on the desk, flaunting all the right curves. I waited for my fated encounter. When it comes to matters between men and women, it's not seduction, it's mutual consent. But plans never go as expected. Sis, can you help me talk to Peter? Luis keeps insisting on leaving. Monica's voice grew closer. I glanced down at my suit, barely buttoned at the bottom, with my chest mostly exposed. I looked like a complete scoundrel. If my sister-in-law saw me like this, wait, my sister-in-law was about to see me like this. Before they opened the door, I dove under the desk, crouching still as a statue. Thankfully, they stopped by the sofa. Melissa's voice sounded disappointed. What are you even thinking? Don't you really like Luis? After a long pause, Monica's voice came. But she dodged the question. Sis, just have Peter tell Luis to stop making a fuss. He'll listen to his brother. Melissa wasn't having it. What are you planning? It's been years since you and Diego were a thing. Don't tell me you really see Luis as a stand-in. Monica replied in confusion. Let me think. I'm not even sure what I feel anymore. She wants to have both. What a heartless woman. My poor brother. The more I thought about it, the angrier I got. I shot out from under the desk. Monica. You. But Monica was already gone. Leaving Melissa sitting on the sofa. Watching me with an amused smirk. Her gaze lingered on my exposed chest. A chill ran through me. I resisted the urge to cover up. I couldn't lose my dignity as a man. She set down her wine glass and motioned for me to come over. Come here. That night. The desk in the study creaked all night long. Chapter 12. Luis was being held captive. He told me, bro. She said if I stay by her side. Once she sorted things out with Diego, she'll know who to choose. Bro. Am I just a piece of property? His eyes were lifeless. 
I turned around and pounded on Melissa's door. Let Luis go. Melissa quickly stood up, but her words sent a chill through me. I know my sister is confused. She just can't see her own heart yet, but she'll figure it out in time. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And why does my brother have to suffer for her confusion? Melissa gave me a strange look. Aren't you supposed to be his support? Don't forget. He chose to be Monica's lover. Monica is the second largest shareholder in the Sioux family. Your brother won't be at a loss by staying with her. Her calm expression made it seem like my brother's situation was just the way things were. I sighed deeply. I regretted it. Luis and I had both made mistakes. This world of the elite wasn't for us. The gap was too wide. And we never should have become their lovers to get closer to them. We had been foolish to dream. I looked at her for a long moment, saying nothing, and turned to leave. What did I mean to her? Was that how she saw me too? I didn't ask. I was afraid it would break everything between us. She had her family, and I had mine. Why should my brother have to wait for her to figure herself out? Who did she think she was? Cheating on both sides. Expecting someone to wait by her side while she made up her mind. I stopped sharing a bed with Melissa after that. I kept an eye on Luis every day. Worried he might do something rash. Even gamers with poor reflexes stick it out for their heroes. He wasn't heartbroken anymore. He was furious. He cursed me out every day. Position yourself better. Are you deliberately walking into his ultimate move? The team fight started. And you were off somewhere. Weren't you? Arg. How are you full HP and can't even kill someone on the verge of death? His shouts grew louder with each word. He was back to full health. I, on the other hand, felt like I was taking a beating. When Melissa saw me, she wanted to say something, but I ignored her. We each had our own stance. There was no need for more words. Monica kept going out early and coming back late as usual. Videos of her and Diego shopping were posted online. Luis quietly watched their interactions, saying nothing. Inevitably, Luis's name came up in the gossip. They said he was just a stand-in. Now that the real man was back, it was time for him to slink away. I created a bunch of fake accounts to go online and argue with them. My phone is almost overheating from all the things I've been doing with it. Chapter 13. His cold indifference started to bother Monica. Drunk. She pointed at his nose and yelled. Do you even know your place? What right do you have to act out with me? I rushed out, ready to confront her. But Luis stopped me with a look. He forced a smile. He tended to her like a devoted lover, playing his role perfectly. Nothing had changed, except that he no longer cared. Monica, however, grew more agitated. She lashed out at Luis, but he didn't throw a tantrum. He continued to act the part of the perfect little lover. Monica screamed. Why aren't you angry? Don't you have any self-respect? Then she stormed off, slamming the door behind her. I grabbed a beer and went to Luis. No words were needed. We just started drinking. One bottle after another. Luis let out a burp and said. Don't worry, bro. I can handle this loss. I could hear it. He'd let it go completely. As his older brother, I couldn't afford to lose to him in this regard. Luis was putting on quite the act. Every time Monica went to see her first love, they'd have a fight, and he'd demand compensation from her. She was loving it. She thought Luis was madly in love with her. But as time went on, she visited her first love less and less. Instead, she spent more time staring at Luis. It seemed like she was starting to figure things out. Each day, she came home earlier. She treated Luis better and better. Luis accepted all her affections as they came. The guards watching us started to relax. I watched silently. Until the day Luis suggested we go watch the sunrise. Chapter 14. Luis walked ahead with Monica. Hand in hand. Like a couple in love. Melissa and I followed behind them. It had been a long time since Melissa and I had a proper conversation. The silence between us was heavy. Monica was raised by me. So I've always spoiled her. Please forgive her. She's a bit slow when it comes to matters of the heart. Melissa suddenly spoke. Her voice soft. As if she was trying to make peace. I kept my head down. Walking. I knew this was her way of offering an olive branch. If I said I understood. We could go back to how things were. Melissa added. Look. They've made up. Please don't be mad anymore. Okay. I looked at Luis. My brother was withering away beside Monica. Couldn't they see how unhappy he was? No. They just didn't care. To them. We were nothing more than pets, amusing to play with when they were interested, but they wouldn't let us go when they weren't. Melissa, would you marry me? She didn't answer, that was my answer. Just like when she explained that the person she met wasn't her fiancé, but she never denied the engagement. The men she had met was already married, but he still had a girlfriend. They were all the same, and it disgusted me, so I really had been just a toy to her. Whatever lingering affection I had for her vanished. Melissa tried to smooth things over. What's wrong with keeping things the way they are? Even if I get married, we can still do our own thing. It won't change anything for you. I felt my stomach churn. Is that what life is like for people like you? Marriage was just a matter of convenience. Melissa asked. 
What did you say? I smiled without responding. Melissa leaned against my shoulder as we watched the sunrise together. She held my hand tightly, refusing to let go. Chapter 15 Luis and I decided to visit the temple on the mountain. Melissa said, Sure, just make sure you're back early. Maybe because we hadn't tried to run lately. They only left a few people waiting for us at the bottom of the mountain. There was only one way down, but that was for walking. Luis and I used to be part of the skydiving club. As soon as they left, we jumped. The intense rush of freefall sent adrenaline surging through me. This was the thrill of being a man. Here we go. The parachutes deployed, and we soared away with the wind. Honestly, I was beyond relieved to have left Melissa behind. Not long after, news broke of her engagement. It was all over the capital, a perfect match, a golden couple, made for each other. The media sang their praises, so predictable and cliché. Thanks to Melissa's maneuvering, her family's stock prices soared. She was never meant to be caught up in romance. As for Monica, she kept sending people to look for Luis. Luis just laughed. Is she out of her mind? What's she trying to pull now? Some tragic love story. Being a lover doesn't mean you have to stick around forever. Luis figured Monica's brain had been kicked by a donkey. Looking back, liking her feels like something from a past life. He said, after we left the Sioux family, Luis and I went back to living like we used to. He played video games for money, and I was pressured to keep writing novels. We were still brothers through thick and thin. Life in the countryside was slow, and time passed slowly too, eventually. Luis found a girlfriend who shared his interests. I remained single, not because I was too heartbroken, but because I couldn't keep up with my writing. One day, after attending a writer's conference in a nearby city, I came back and noticed something off. There were more people in town than usual. A lot of them seemed to be watching me, and I knew exactly who could pull something like this off. That woman who just wouldn't leave me alone. I ran home as fast as I could. Sure enough, there was an uninvited guest waiting. Monica stood in the middle of the living room, red-eyed glaring at Luis, who was standing protectively in front of his girlfriend. After a year apart, Monica had changed. The arrogance and wildness were gone. Chapter 16. Her voice cracked with emotion. What did I ever do wrong? Why are you treating me like this? Luis's face was cold. I told you. I'm not a stand-in. Monica didn't understand. I told you. I didn't know at first, but I've changed now. This was a matter I couldn't get involved in, so I just sat back and watched. Luis took a deep breath and reassured the woman beside him. Why did you ever think I'd wait for you? Yes, I liked you. But the moment I found out I was just a stand-in, I stopped. Please leave and stop disrupting my life. Monica glanced at the woman behind him, eyeing her up and down with contempt. She sneered. You're really into this trash. Does she even know you were once my lover? Luis clenched his fists. What had been a desperate attempt to get close to someone he liked was now being twisted into something so degrading. Monica, we each got what we wanted. Stop dragging this out. It's pathetic. He had said everything there was to say. I thought Monica would storm off in a fury. After all, she was a Beijing princess. When she didn't get her way, she forced things to happen. Take him, she said coldly, before Luis could fight back. He was bound and taken away. I called the police, but nothing happened. Chapter 17 The only person who could control Monica was her sister. So, I went to find her. I entered the Sioux family estate without any resistance. The villa was empty. I opened the door to the study, and there she was, leaning against the floor fan quietly watching me. The person who once made my heart race now felt like a stranger. Neither of us spoke. I was worried about Luis. Can you stop your sister? My brother and I just want to live normal lives. Melissa's presence was more intimidating than before. Why should I help you? What's in it for me? She looked at me, and her meaning was clear. I felt nothing. I was simply curious. Haven't you already been doing that? We lived far away, but we weren't impossible to find. It shouldn't have taken over a year for them to track us down. Who else could have kept Monica from finding us but Melissa? I didn't care why she did it, nor did I care what her motives were. I've missed you. She stepped forward and wrapped her arms around me. Her warm breath brushed against my chest. Come back. We can go back to how things were. I can make you a star in the online literature world. All you have to do is come back. Her voice was like the devil's whisper in my ear. I took a step back. Marry me, and I'll come back. She hesitated. She couldn't do it. She needed to marry into another powerful family to take a bigger slice of the pie. Can you wait for me? Just a few years. I promise. After that, I'll marry you. The Sioux family is my parents' legacy. I can't just. I cut her off. Melissa. No one should have to wait forever. They really were sisters. Both expecting everyone to wait for them without question. We're not on the same path anymore. Chapter 18. The tension in the room thickened. Peter. I'm not an easy person to deal with. What my sister can do, I can do too. Ordinary people can't fight the powerful. Just like now. When I was trapped in the villa and the servants turned a blind eye to my situation. 
Melissa forcibly intertwined her fingers with mine. Look, this is the power I have. Stay by my side, and all of this could be yours. We stood at the highest point in the villa, not as tall as a skyscraper, but her words made it feel like she stood above it all. Her ability to turn the tide, her thunderous control of power. But, then let's get married. She could offer me everything, except this. The Sioux family needed alliances, needed external support to break the deadlock they were in. I understood how hard it was for her, and I knew she loved me, but she would never marry me. All I wanted was her, and she wanted everything. We were walking different paths, afraid I'd get bored. She took me out shopping. We sat together in a private room. Soon, someone else joined us. I looked up and almost laughed at the absurdity of the situation. Sitting across from me was Melissa's fiancé. She had brought me, and he had brought another woman. Introductions were made. Melissa introduced me as her boyfriend, and he introduced the woman as his girlfriend. He spoke with an authoritative voice, one that brooked no argument. Mr. Lin, my relationship with Miss Sue is purely a business arrangement. After the wedding, aside from formal occasions, we won't have any contact. I won't interfere in your relationship, just as she won't interfere in mine. He glanced at the woman sitting beside him. Chapter 19 The two of them started discussing the latest financial trends as if no one else was in the room. They even talked about their wedding date. The woman sitting with him seemed used to these situations. Even hearing her beloved man talk about his upcoming wedding didn't crack her flawless smile, but I could see the emptiness in her eyes. It was said that she was his first love. You'd think he loved her, but he wouldn't give her a proper place in his life. Instead, he openly acknowledged her existence in front of his fiancé. Is this love? No. It's clipping her wings. Telling her she's nothing more than a mistress. It was a violation of her dignity. I watched him walk away with her, powerless to do anything. My sympathy was useless, because, in the end, I was just a toy too. That night, Melissa was in high spirits, tipsy. She dragged me to her secret place. It was just a room. She pulled me in, proudly showing me her collection. They were all signed copies of my books. Not exactly rare treasures, but she had put so much care into it. Each book had its own display. This is the first book you ever published, because the signature was random. I bought dozens of copies just to get one signed by you. Look at this the third prize you won in a writing contest. I was so happy for you, and this one. In addition to the books, the walls were covered with awards I'd forgotten I'd ever won and photos of me. Even some from my life in the small town. She had found me long ago. After all, she hugged me from behind. I gave you time to think, but you can't forget me, so I brought you back. Peter, wouldn't it be nice to go back to how things were? Chapter 20. The entire room screamed her love for me. Honestly, having someone who understands you so deeply who loves you so much, and who could give you everything except marriage, how could I not be moved? And she was so successful, so beautiful, I was moved, but only for a moment, because then I understood, she and I would never work out, I'm a novelist, I've written too many stories about undying love, I know that marriage is the most basic form of respect between two people who love each other, she couldn't give that to me, she was going to marry another man, I gently pried her hands away and, under her disappointed gaze, shook my head firmly, Melissa didn't understand. She had laid everything bare for me. So why was I so heartless? Was marriage really that important? She even asked me aloud. I wasn't about to give her some grand speech, but I thought of that woman I saw earlier today. Do you really think this is good for me? I asked her. Melissa took my hand and placed it over her heart. Power. Status. Money. And my heart that only belongs to you. What more could you want? Her heart pounded beneath my hand. Melissa. We're just not right for each other. Put yourself in my shoes. Would you be satisfied? I answered my own question. You would be. Because you're ambitious. You'd do whatever it takes to climb higher. But I wouldn't. I don't care about those things. If she truly knew me, she wouldn't keep asking. Melissa was smart. She understood the subtext. But she was unwilling to accept it. After being rejected again and again, her face darkened. Chapter 21. I didn't say a word. Melissa received a call. And her face changed. Luis jumped from a building. When I got to the hospital. Monica was sitting outside the operating room. I didn't even hesitate to slap her. She didn't fight back. Just stared blankly at the surgery room door. If anything happens to my brother, I'll make sure you pay for it. I lost control and grabbed her by the throat. Her eyes rolled back as I choked her. It took people to pull me off her. But I still glared at both her and Melissa. Melissa didn't even try to help her sister. She just trembled and said, Don't look at me like that. Peter, don't talk to me. You make me sick. If they couldn't have it, they'd destroy it. How could people like them exist in this world? Monica was taken away. I was left pacing in front of the surgery room. A dozen ways to kill her flashed through my mind. But when the doctor came out and said it was just a fracture, all my anger melted away. When Luis woke up, he was grinning like an idiot. I raised my hand to teach him a lesson. 
but seeing his bandaged foot softened me. This kid, he really wasn't afraid of anything. Thank God it was only the second floor. If it had been higher, I would have been picking up his body. Monica came by a few times, begging for forgiveness. Luis acted like he didn't even see her. Her love, so late, wasn't worth a thing. When I found out Luis jumped to avoid being assaulted, I wanted to stab her myself. Melissa slapped Monica right in front of us. You drove him away yourself. The Sioux family knows when to let go. Don't embarrass us anymore. Monica had really gone insane. She knelt outside Luis's hospital room, begging for forgiveness, saying she wouldn't get up unless he forgave her. Inside, Luis was playing video games. She fainted, woke up, and then said she wanted to marry him. What a joke. Even Melissa couldn't marry who she wanted. Did Monica really think she could? Chapter 22. Melissa sent me a message. She said Monica wouldn't bother us anymore. I heard Monica had been locked away. I told Luis about it. I watched his expression, afraid he might still have feelings for her. But the brat was too busy flirting with his girlfriend to care. After what happened with Luis jumping from the building, Melissa stopped trying to drag me back. As we were about to return to the small town, Melissa came to see me one last time. When we met, we really were like strangers now. She said, my fiancé's little girlfriend jumped too. She was pregnant. Almost didn't make it. My fiancé's losing his mind. The men wanted her to keep the baby. That child would be branded a bastard from birth. The woman was strong-willed. She jumped. You were right. We really are different. Melissa hugged me one last time. I don't want to regret things when I reach that point. Peter, I wish you all the best. She still didn't fully understand why those things never attracted me or that woman. But she was willing to let go. Goodbye. We returned to the small town. After everything we'd been through, only Luis and I were still together. The two of us, stubborn brothers, Luis said, Bro, do you really not regret it? I feel like Melissa really loved you. I rolled my eyes and smacked the back of his head. Monica's been trying to make amends, but I don't see you forgiving her. At the mention of Monica, Luis grimaced, Why'd you bring up that mess? Later on, Luis got married. He had a kid, and I became an uncle. Melissa also got married. Her fiancé hadn't changed. I don't know what happened to that woman. I hope she left him. The Sioux family flourished under Melissa's leadership. She and her husband were perfect for each other because they were the same. As for Monica, she seemed to have found her first love and turned him into Luis's replacement. But her first love wasn't an idiot. Once he realized he was a stand-in, he blackmailed the Sioux family for a hefty sum. Then, he gave Monica a good beating. Melissa, worried Monica would cause more trouble, sent her abroad. This kind of life, it's finally interesting. Chapter 23, Epilogue. What can I say? Do people who've been hurt by love all end up running to the same place? I found myself pondering this as I looked at Luna, the ex-girlfriend of my ex-girlfriend's husband. She went by Luna. Since we had once shared a similar heartbreak, I eagerly helped her find a place to stay. Her feelings for him were deep, and even now, she hadn't fully moved on. So, I took her on trips around the mountains, introducing her to all the best local food in the town. As we grew closer, I started calling her by her nickname, Luna. There's something about the simple pleasures of life that can heal even the most broken hearts. Eventually, she could talk about her past relationship without flinching. Luis, on the other hand, kept glancing between Luna and me, his eyes darting back and forth. I could tell right away what kind of crazy idea he had. So I smacked him on the head, making him yelp. We had planned a four-person outing, but Luis and his wife stubbornly refused to come along. He kept pushing Luna and me to go have fun without them, claiming he had a headache and needed to sleep. I immediately stopped in my tracks. Brothers are like hands and feet. I'll stay here with you. He looked at me, exasperated, and shoved me away. Get lost, you lonely fool. I knew he meant well. But seriously, Luna and I were just friends. Neither of us felt anything romantic. Luna looked at me and said, if you don't mind, we could actually team up and live together. She looked at me seriously. I chuckled and ruffled her hair. Sure, as siblings, though, silly girl. Just because you've been hurt once doesn't mean you won't find love again. There's still a long road ahead. I glanced at the news, recognizing a familiar name. Sue family's Melissa divorces Wong family's firstborn. In small print below, the couple had no children. What was going on? Just then, there was a knock at the door. I opened it to find Melissa standing there, smiling brightly. She hadn't changed much since the last time I saw her. In the distance, I saw Luna running ahead, with a tallman following behind at a leisurely pace. A triumphant smile on his face, Melissa said, Peter, I bought the house next to yours, so persistent, this life, full of surprises, really is unpredictable, what does the future hold, who knows.